Recall from the previous video that fusion in a red giant includes helium fusion in the core and hydrogen fusion in the shells surrounding the core. But what happens to the star now? After helium fusion begins in the core creating carbon, the stars just can't seem to get it right for quite a while. They have various thermonuclear fusion processes happening inside at different temperatures and different rates. You know, helium fusion in the core, hydrogen fusion in the shells surrounding the core, the usual. Now these are variable stars and they are unstable. The reason we call them variable stars is because they vary both in size and luminosity at this stage of their evolution. They get hot, so they expand, but they cool down from that expansion, so they contract. The contraction causes them to heat up again, so they expand again. Then they cool down again, and then they contract again, then they heat up again, so they expand again, and then the cycle just continues, and so on and so forth. These stars struggle to be stable, so they end up on the instability strip. Here is the instability strip on the HR diagram. This is what we mean when we say stars end up on the instability strip. They're constantly experiencing variations in temperature and luminosity, so they keep moving around in this region of the HR diagram. For example, this star moves upwards and to the right as it expands, cools down, and grows brighter. Then it'll move downwards and to the left as it contracts, heats up, and appears somewhat dimmer as a result. Remember, physically smaller stars have less surface area, and a smaller surface area means less light emitted, and that means dimmer stars. Now, in general, there are two different types of variable stars. Other sources might list more subgroups of these, but we'll focus on the following. RR Lyrae variable stars and Cepheid variables. But first, we'll talk about RR Lyrae stars because RR Lyrae stars are evolved medium mass stars with helium core fusion that have luminosity cycles of less than one day. Now, why is this so special? And what's a luminosity cycle in the first place? A luminosity cycle is the period of time during which a star's brightness changes from bright to dim to bright again. But before we dive deeper, let's take a quick detour and learn about the history of the name of these stars. The term RR Lyrae now refers to stars that fit the description of an RR Lyrae variable star, but the very particular title given to these stars, RR Lyrae, comes from the first star of this kind to be detected. In 1901, observations made of the constellation Lyra by Scottish astronomer Williamina Fleming, who was already famous for her work in astronomy at Harvard College Observatory, having previously discovered the Horsehead Nebula earlier in 1888, among 58 other nebulae that she would discover in her lifetime, led to the discovery of a star in the constellation Lyra whose magnitude was continuously changing. This was unexpected at the time, so the peculiar behavior of the star RR Lyrae became notably more intriguing to astronomers of the early 20th century. Eventually, several hundreds more of these stars would be discovered, and their uniquely cyclical periods of pulsation can still be seen by looking at their stellar light curves. This is the light curve of an RR Lyrae variable star, if not RR Lyrae itself. A light curve is a graph of a star's magnitude as it changes over time. Sometimes the magnitude is brighter, hence the peaks in this graph, and sometimes it's dimmer, the dips. Here's the bright to dim to bright cycle for this star, and it takes around half a day in this case. Here we can see the light curves of four more RR Lyrae variable stars, each showing a period of pulsation of around one day. The more accurate periods are shown in the bottom right corner of each graph though these values are based on the actual data that resulted in the graphs rather than approximations made from observing the light curves themselves. Now, where else are we likely to see these RR Lyrae variable stars? Here's an image of the globular cluster Messier 15 or M15 featuring over 100,000 stars that are gravitationally bound to one another. We'll learn more about globular clusters later, but for now, know that these structures are where we're most likely to find these RR Lyrae variable stars. This is an animation showing the various RR Lyrae stars in M15, produced by using observational data from the Gaia satellite. If the variable stars are a little bit hard to see, let's zoom in to really make them pop.
Now, here's the cool thing about variable stars. We can actually use them to measure distances in astronomy. You see, the period of pulsation for an RR Lyrae star depends on three things. The star's mass, its temperature, and its luminosity. The difference between its measured luminosity and actual luminosity allows for its distance to be calculated using the distance modulus. Such a star is called a standard candle in astronomy. And we'll learn more about how we use them to actually measure distances later in this unit.